And I think we deserve better as the Republican Party and as the United States than a guy who's going to be convicted of felonies this April by to be whom, our nominee Chris, and to try whom, to be our president. By, by, by a, a bunch of liberal Democrats that are trying to take him down because they're, they fear him. And that was Newsmax anchor Eric Bowling spewing Donald Trump talking points. Chris Christie responded by destroying Bowling. No. Guess what? If no, Chris Christie was not 53%, by a bunch of liberal Democrats, you, they'd no, probably have your butt no, in the, I'm in not the gonna put too. No. I'm not going to put up with you saying that. He's going to be convicted by Mark Meadows, a founder of the Freedom Caucus, and his chief of staff, who he called the next James Baker. That guy is now testifying and will sit 20 feet away from a court, away from Donald Trump in a courtroom, taking an oath and saying he committed crimes and he directed others to commit crimes, including me. That's what he's going to say. All right. And that's not some woke prosecutor. And that's not some group of liberals. That's a guy who founded the Freedom Caucus in the House, a Republican from North Carolina, no. No. and his choice for chief of staff. Eric, I'm not a numbers guy. I'm a character guy. And when Mark Meadows gets on that stand, everything I've been saying about Donald Trump that you've been making fun of me about for months is going to wind up being true. The truth is coming, baby. I don't make fun the of you. The truth is coming. Chris Actually, Eric Bowling has made fun of Chris Christie for attacking Donald Trump. But the larger point here is that Chris Christie, who is gaining in the 2024 GOP presidential nomination polls, has been hammering away at Donald Trump and all Trump supporters by pointing to reality. And that reality includes the fact that Donald Trump's former White House chief of staff is a lead witness alleging Trump broke the law. Mark Meadows, one of the founders of the Freedom Caucus, and his chief of staff is going to testify but that again, Donald Trump committed governor, crimes. Again, and instru- no, 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 this. no, no, Eric. All this for and instructed years. him, not, and instructed him to that. commit He's crimes. Still Mark Meadows, in you, South you're, Carolina. you would call him a hero weeks ago. No, Come on. No, I'm. I'm, I'm don't interrupt me when I'm I start just, to say I'm things just, that make I'm people uncomfortable. Just a numbers guy. I'm just a numbers guy. It's insurmountable. Let's be right. honest. It is insurmountable to, to overtake I'm a Donald character Trump guy. by any of these people a, unless, I mean, I, of course, something dramatic happens with Trump in his personal life, oh, being convicted of something and or, or nothing, worse. Nothing, but, but, nothing dramatic could possibly happen in Donald Trump's life. I'm not a numbers guy, by the way, Eric. I'm a character guy. And that focus on character by Chris Christie keeps intensifying. And his throwdowns with Trump apologists in the media have become legendary. A few weeks ago, Christie blasted Trump's actions on January the 6th, and once again, it was a Newsmax anchor, this time named Rob Finnerty, who tried to defend Trump and got flattened. Watch. Let's look at the conduct. His conduct on January 6th was reprehensible. We disagree with that assessment. Well, I don't know how you can. You stand Peacefully on, and patriotically is how you can. That's well, what he said let, that let, let, let me tell you something. That's not what he did. That's what he said. No, well, it's not what he did. But he then he, told them, he, he then told them to march up to the Capitol. He knew that there were people in that Peacefully audience Peacefully and with patriotically, weapons. though, no, no, look, right? No, 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 no. That's not all he said. Right. You can focus on those three words. Well, that's, that's a quote. You're paraphrasing. I'm paraphrasing as well. But that's, no, no, there right, are arguments so, on both sides, right? right? Well, no, there's not arguments on both sides because when you incite people, as he did that day, and you see what the result is. Even if he didn't intend for them to be violent, he saw them become violent, and he sat by and did nothing okay. for three hours, watched it on television from the White House, and did nothing to get people to stop it. In my view, that's beneath the conduct of someone who's been honored to have the presidency. Oh. For his part, Donald Trump has been responding, not by challenging Chris Christie and the facts, but by attacking Christie personally and using slurs and insults. When... Christy, sir, I'm sorry. He is not a fat pig, okay? This man, he said, he is not a fat pig. No, it's true. And you can't, you can't use the term fat. You're allowed to use the word pig, but not fat. No, the man just said, he's a fat pig. And I said, no, he's not a fat pig. So now the press can't kill me because all I'm doing is responding. I'm responding. He is not a fat pig. It's so childish. It's so juvenile. He is such a spoiled baby. Um, Whenever you want to criticize him, I mean, anyway, that's the way he responds. And you and I are both lucky enough to be parents. Um, And if we had a child who conducted themselves like that, um, we'd send them to their room, not to the White House. 
And to try and keep Donald Trump from the White House and defeat him in the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, Christie has been relentless in attacking Donald Trump's character. Whether it's Trump's approach to foreign dictators or Trump's aversion of democracy or even Trump's lack of character when it comes to money. Donald Trump's fundraising, he has quietly begun diverting uh, m money that he is raising for his 2024 campaign into a political action committee that he has used, which we can see from filings, for his personal legal fees. What do you make of that? It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. He's going to middle class men and women in this country and they're donating 15, 25, 50, $100 because they believe in Donald Trump and they want him to be president again. They're not giving that money so he can pay his personal legal fees. Why do you think he's not using his own money to pay for his legal fees? Because he's the cheapest person I've ever met in my life. That's why. Recently, Christie even took time out to hammer Donald Trump while Christie was traveling through Israel and getting updates on the war against Hamas. Um, his entire conduct from election night 2020 forward has been about lying to the American people, trying to steal the election and now being charged criminally with that, and cheating the American people um, out of uh, our democracy. Let me tell you, as someone who ran the fifth largest prosecuting office in this country for seven years and had a 130 and 0 record in political corruption cases, Donald Trump is going to be convicted this spring of these crimes. And we cannot, as a Republican Party, have a felon as our nominee. Chris Christie's attacks on Donald Trump and Christie's predictions about the GOP getting wiped out with Trump as the nominee have come from other Republicans as well. Here is New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununa recently with Jen Psaki on MSNBC. I care. All he cares about right now is getting the nomination. He can't win in November. Independents hate it. There's no way Donald Trump will win anything above 31 percent of the independents, which is why Republicans as a whole will get crushed if he's on. Uh, look. As bad as he would be as being on top of the ticket for because we'll lose the presidency, he hurts school board races. He hurts governorships, Congress races, congressional races, Senate races. We will lose all these seats like we did in 22. The problem for the Republican Party is that when it comes to presidential candidates, Chris Christie is all alone in delivering a steady, consistent and aggressive anti-Trump barrage. Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, Tim Scott and Vivek Ramaswamy all raised their hand at the first debate and said they would support someone even if they were a convicted felon. I'm the only one left on the stage who did not because I believe our standards and have to be much higher for the person who sits in the Oval Office. So is Chris Christie being courageous or foolish given the MAGA chokehold on the Republican Party? Well, for the moment, it doesn't really matter. Polls show Christie gaining ground on Trump in the early primary state of New Hampshire, and whoever emerges as the top Trump alternative there stands a good chance of being the candidate that Republicans coalesce behind in a last-ditch effort to stop Donald Trump from the nomination. In the meantime, Chris Christie's pugnacious style seems to be a natural fit for pummeling Donald Trump. And when Christie takes on the Trump apologists in the media, especially the hapless folks at Newsmax, the result is pure carnage. Christie is destroying the Newsmax crowd, and there's more of that coming. By the way, some of Donald Trump's MAGA lunatics in the U.S. House recently got crushed by FBI Director Christopher Wray. Can you confirm that the FBI had that sort of engagement with your own agents embedded within to the crowd on January 6th? If you are asking whether the violence at the Capitol on January 6th was part of some operation orchestrated by FBI sources and or agents, the answer is emphatically You're saying not. no. No, You're saying no. not okay. violence orchestrated Let's by FBI on. sources or agents. Hmm. Check out that video at the link below. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for joining us.